church or a in the hospital. So I spend a lot of time uh, going to the hospital, visiting with folks and praying with folks. And uh, a question that many times comes up is, well, why, why do, do Christians get sick and why do they, they suffer? And, and uh, well, we know about his suffering. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we reign with him. Another place it says to know him and the fellowship of his sufferings. Another place it says, for we know that the sufferings of this life, of this present time or present life, or forget how exactly how that's worded, the sufferings of this present time are not to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed. And we look at our Savior, our Savior was a suffering Savior. The Bible says he was acquainted with grief. He was a man of sorrows. And one of the great things that our Lord did was to heal the sick. One of the, one of the great parts of his ministry was healing the sick. And, and there would be questions uh, uh, that would arise when he was healing on, on, on what, what was the problem here, Lord? And we'll look at some of that. But there's about four reasons that I see in Scripture, maybe five. I think I've got four down that reason that people get sick. Now you look at Job. When, when every, all the afflictions that God put on Job, they came upon him, his three buddies. They showed up and they started blaming Job for his sickness. Uh, they, they had it in their mind that it was because of unconfessed sin that Job got sick. And I think if we allow ourselves as Christians, we'll see somebody in the church that'll get sick and it'll be in the back of our head that, oh, I wonder what, what he did, wonder what's going on with him, why he's sick. Well, just like Job's friends were absolutely wrong, most of the time we're going to be wrong if we try to figure out why someone is going through a battle with their health. Now we'll look at, at some of the, the scripture that talks about prolonging your life and health. In Proverbs 10, 27, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. That's a, that's a pretty good thing right there. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Proverbs 3, 1 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Watch it. For length of days and long life. And peace shall they add to thee. That promise is also given in Exodus 20 in the commandments. This is the only commandment uh, that offers the promise with it. It's called the referred to as the commandment with promise. Ecclesiastes uh, or Exodus 20:12 says, "Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land." which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So God can shorten your days or he can add to them. I've heard of how many times have you heard someone say, well, it's all cut and dried. When it's your time, it's your time. Not necessarily according to several verses of Scripture. You can add to your days or you can take from. Hezekiah. Remember the story of Hezekiah? He was a, 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 one of the good kings. And Hezekiah, it says, in, in a, a, well, he asked the Lord for 15 years. Anybody remember that story? He was going to die. And he asked the Lord to give him more years, and God gave him 15 years. Because he loved the Lord, he feared the Lord, and went to the Lord in prayer, and God, God let him have that. That's incredible. Ecclesiastes seven seventeen: Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? So if there's a time appointed... It's appointed to man once to die. Don't necessarily say there when. 
But it is appointed to man once to die, and after this a judgment. But here it, it says, why should thou die before thy time? You can take from it, and you can add to it. Proverbs 22, 3 says this, A prudent man foreseeth the evil, and hideth himself. But the sip, simple pass on and are punished. You, you can't be reckless. When you start acting reckless, look out. Because you can be punished for your recklessness. I remember some of my crazy times driving. Crazy. Reckless. God could have snuffed me out so many times. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. You see something ahead of you, you better watch out. You better take a detour around it. Proverbs 27, 12, A prudent man foreseeth the evil. The same thing. That's Proverbs 22, 3. But the simple pass on and are punished. All right, now let's look at diseases. Diseases are first mentioned in Exodus 15, and the diseases, when they're first mentioned, are associated with Egypt. Egypt was a type of those who were in opposition to God's people and to God's word. Egypt is always a type of the world. <clears throat> in Exodus 15:26. The Bible says, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Now I hear the Lord through Moses talking to the children of Israel. If thou wilt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight. And will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. Watch it. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Wow. That's pretty wild. Now notice what the Lord said in Mark 2 and verse 9. He had healed this fellow and then he says, uh, Whether is it easier to say, Say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. Remember, to heal that, heal that fellow, he said, arise, thy sins are forgiven thee. Arise and take thy bed and walk. And man, the Pharisee crowd, man, he's, he's, he's acting like he can forgive sins. That's one of the things they got after him about. But I see in that passage that if there was no sin, genetically, there would, it has to do with disease, I'd say, somewhere too. But that, look at the, all the generations from Adam till us today, all the uh, one generation sin, and, and there, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of speculating that there may, it has to do with genetic propensities toward uh, uh, some type of disease which may be rooted in sin several generations back. Now there's some scripture kind of against that. The Bible says the sins of the, uh, the father shall not be visited upon the son. But then it talks about four or five generations it takes to clear out some traits. I don't know that. I just thought it was interesting when the Lord said, Is it easier to say to the sick of the poly, Thy sins be forgiven thee? Or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. Interesting thoughts there. But there's a lot of reasons for sickness in the Bible. Uh, for some, I think it's sowing and reaping. Just flat out, you abuse this body, you abuse it to a point, you're going to reap where you have sown. You smoke like a train, and you drink like a fish, and you take every drug that anybody will, will uh, give to you, guess what? Don't expect to live a long and healthy life. That's just sowing and reaping. That's a part 
from all the other things. Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Hosea 8, 7 says, For they have sown to the wind, they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stalk, the bud shall yield no meal. If so, be it yield, the stranger shall swallow it up. Sometimes it's just old age. These bodies are still under the curse and they wear out. When my mama died, she was almost 97. Somebody asked what she died from. I said, old age. Duh. Old age. Bible says three score and ten. Four score if by reason of strength. You live to be 80 years old, you're a strong person. My mama, almost 97, 96, over 96. That's incredible. I buried a woman in Aurora. One time I buried her. Uh, the funeral service was up at Fitch Denny, and she was 108 years old. And uh, from the way the family talked, I suspected that uh, she had cooked. She is an old Kentucky woman that cooked with lard and ate all that pork all, those, all her life, and it finally killed her. Finally killed her. It's like my mama. Finally got her. Now, some of the reasons for sickness is to teach us to trust God. It's God using a sickness to draw us to him to, so that we'll go to him and call on him and learn to trust in him. What Job say? Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Job trusted God. No matter what God would man, did God put it on him? Well, what can happen when we, we don't trust God? Remember the story of Asa? Asa in the Bible, he was diseased in his feet. Probably, my guess, maybe diabetes or something. Uh, let me read it. 2 Chronicles 16, 12. And Asa, in the 39th year of his reign, was diseased in his feet, until his disease was exceeding great. Yet, in his disease, he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. He didn't go to God with it. He went to the doctors. You can't leave God out of the equation. And you know what happened? It says he sought not to the Lord but to the physicians. And the next verse in 2 Chronicles 16, 13 says, And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. Hmm. Now that don't mean, that, now that don't get me wrong. That don't say that there's anything wrong with doctors. The Bible says, who needeth a physician but he that is sick? If you're sick, you need a physician, but God needs to be your primary care. You go to God with it first, and God will direct you to the physicians you need. There's nothing wrong with medicine. The, very, the Bible says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That means it does good like a medicine does good. There's a story of a fellow uh, where they t told him he had a boil, and they told him to put a plaster of figs on the, the boil, and he's recovered. You know what that is? That's medicine. But you, as Christians, we seek to the Lord our God for healing, and we use whatever God provides for us. I'm funny about doctors. I look them up. I research them. I compare this one, that one. Uh, I don't just take dealer. I just don't don't take come what may with the doctor. I look at what schools they went to. Say, is that trusting God? Yeah, God gives me sense to do that, so I do it. Some, you know, sometimes sickness in Scripture is to keep you from sin. Isn't that interesting? 
Not because of your sin necessarily, but to keep you from sin. 2 Corinthians 12, 1. Remember the story of Paul? He was caught up to the third heaven. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 1. It, Paul said, it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory... I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Now, if you look at Usher's chronology on, on, on this story, and if you, I, I, I did this. I, I looked at that. He said 14 years before he wrote this, before this occurred, this thing happened to him. So I went in the chronology and back to 14 years and read that, that, that chapter. And it talks about him getting left for dead outside the city. At the same time that it appears what happened then. They thought he was dead. And here he said he couldn't tell whether he was dead or not. He said, I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. You say, little sidebar, I just thought of the little sidebar fellow said, well, how can you be caught up to paradise if paradise is down in the heart of the earth? This is after the cross. The Lord raptured out paradise During that three days and three nights when he was in the heart of the earth. So he was caught up to paradise. Clear any guesswork there. Of such a one will I glory. Wait. I cannot tell how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. So he was caught up to paradise, and he got some revelation from God that that just said him, man, you talk about about on top top of things, that's something. And here's what it said, for though I would desire to glory... I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure. What an honor. What a thing to get caught up into paradise for the Lord let you see what's in your future. Later on, Paul would say, I have a desire to depart and to be with God, which is far better. He knew what he was talking about. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There it is. He was, saw a lot of things no man had ever seen. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan. That's God gave that to him. Gave him sickness. They said he, it hurt so bad. The pain was so bad he couldn't see with it. He, it blinded him from time to time. Was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. God gave Paul the thorn in the flesh. He made him sick so he wouldn't be lifted up in pride. He, that kept him from sinning. My, my, my. He was given a thorn in the flesh to keep him from sin. He said about it, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Boy, you don't feel like you got much strength. Most gladly, Paul said, therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. So Paul's thorn in the flesh was to keep him from being lifted up in pride. And was also to teach him to trust in God. All right, now we'll get to the unconfessed sin. And that's another reason why some people get sick. 
1 John 1, 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Mm. Hebrews 1.25, Hebrews 12.5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children... My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. God will chasten you. He will rebuke you for sin sometimes, and it may be because of your crazy, your sinful thoughts, your sinful actions. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, or chastening, chastening I think it is, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit after their own, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. God may send some correction in your life in the form of sickness. Don't know. That's one of the things. That's the thing that Christians have a tendency, judgmental Christians have a tendency to run to that whenever someone gets sick. Like Job's buddies. And they were all wrong about Job. Proverbs 3.12, For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. 1 Corinthians 11.30, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now this is getting up to uh, uh, partaking of the Lord's table, but he says, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Man, I love that verse. That means when you, when you judge it yourself, you know it's sin. You call it what it is. You go to God and say, God, I've sinned. You confess it to him. You judge it yourselves. said, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Mm, 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 mm. you get overtaken with a sin you need to judge it right there God I'm sorry God I'm, I, I blew it I messed up Lord I sinned forgive me Lord see when you do that God does not have to send judgment on you because you have already judged yourself he knows your heart he knows whether it's true whether it's sincere He's able to discern the very thoughts and intents of the heart. All right. What's another reason? How about to just glorify God? People get sick sometimes just so God can be glorified. Twice I thought I was going to die with cancer. Doctor said I should have died. Then the chronologist one time said, I don't know why you're here. You shouldn't be here. God, God cured me. What's that about? John 9, 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind. I'm in John 9, verse 1. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, here it is, who did sin, this man 
or his parents that he was born blind. See, so the disciples, evidently it was a common thought among uh, the children of Israel, it is a common thought among the Jews that sin was a reason for most things. He, he says, they said to him, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, neither one, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. My, my, my. That his father might be glorified through that. He he (laughs) born blind just so the Lord could show up and, and get glory for healing him. My, my, my. John 11, 1, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby my 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 a lot of reasons why you might get sick may just be sowing and and reaping I've been sick before from as a kid from eating too much banana pudding as a result of my overindulgence of my gluttony I got sick Sowing and reaping. Jeremiah thirty thirteen says, There is none to please thy cause, because thou hast may be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. Remember what we said about medicine? They're good. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That's in Proverbs seventeen twenty two. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. So medicines are for healing. I like that thing about drieth the bones. A broken spirit drieth the bones. I had an aunt. She'd been dead for years and years. But you'd call her on the phone. My Aunt June. And... When she'd pick up the phone, she'd say, hello. You'd think that she was near death just by the way she answered the phone. Always, oh, so down, so pitiful sounding. You get that attitude, that'll dry your bones up. Hello. I don't know how I'm getting there, but let me move on. Luke, the beloved physician, he was a doctor, and he's called Beloved. Colossians 4, 14, Matthew 9, 12. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Now notice this late in Paul's ministry. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Luke, the beloved physician, was with Paul during a big part, the last part, of Paul's ministry. I suspect that's because Paul's often infirmities that he referred to. Dr. Luke traveled with him. Notice the Apostle Paul says here, late in his ministry, this is one of the verses that, that will show you that those apostolic gifts went out with the apostles. It showed the power of the early church. Now, I'm not going to stay there tonight on on this. But one of the the proof texts of that is is here in 2 Timothy 4.19. Paul says, Salute Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus abodeth Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. Paul, he had to leave that guy there because he was sick. 
He couldn't heal him. This was late in his ministry. Just thought I'd throw that in. Just no extra charge on that little proof text there. Several reasons why you get sick. Maybe to glorify God. Maybe to keep you from sin. Could be because of unconfessed sin. Could just be sowing and reaping. You never know. We don't know. We know that this, this body is under the curse. And it's subject. Uh, the Bible says the, the rain falleth. One event happeneth to us all. The rain falleth upon the just and the unjust. A disease can come into your life can attack this body of flesh and that's as a Christian we go to God with it and we ask God for direction with it. He's our primary care physician. God might heal us. We pray that he will. We ask him to be merciful to us and he sometimes he he was merciful to me and my cancer. Then you go through all kinds of stages. You wonder why. I wonder you, you go on a guilt trip. I think they call it survivor's guilt. Well why did God heal me and and not Others that I love that, that died because of the disease. I don't know. That's not my call. But I'm thankful, God, to keep me, keep me going. I remember Paul, when he talked about that part, said, I have a desire to depart and be with God, which uh, is far better. The next verse he said, but it is more needful for you that I stay. Sometimes God will keep us around because somebody needs us. Sickness, it'll happen to all of us from time to time. I hate being sick. I, and as a kid, and of course as an adult too, I milk it for all it's worth. I, I want somebody to wait on me hand and foot. And when I get sick, I get downright pitiful. <laughs> Joyce giving me a funny look over there. But go to God with it. He's your primary care physician. Love him. He may be teaching you to trust in him. I'm done. Everyone stand up tonight. God is good. Continue, if you would, through the night to pray for Jeannie. I pray that God spares her. We'll see what he does. Pray that he does. What are we singing, Jethro? Uh, Page 103. Page 